Just a short rant against opportunists and opportunism. Because I've seen a glut of both in libertarian and anarchist-adjacent spaces lately. Uh, that really highlights that we've got sort of an entryism problem from more authoritarian spaces. To start with, we'll talk about somebody who I've been calling out for a bit now, being an opportunist themselves, and sort of glomming on to more statist circles um, in order to get approval and clout from those circles, in order to get those circles on her side. This person went by Ashley, uh, or Dread Pirate Ashalute, on Twitter, and just to be clear, has not been convicted. But recently, after a significant amount of sort of cucking to the more statist circles in these regards, um, after a certain amount of events lined up with this person being arrested and with certain accounts that people claim are legitimate um, relating to the arrest that has recently happened, basically, this dread pirate Achalute, Achley, has been arrested for possession of child porn. Now, this person has been huge in the trans-anarchist space for a bit now. Um, gaining recognition, gaining support, gaining followers for takes like, I am not a victim and neither are you. Talking about, like, sexual assault. Um, and for things like, you know, uh, trans people done gone too far, I'm one of the good ones, trust me, like, pick me behavior kind of thing. And, um, I'd been calling that sort of thing out for a while, and sort of saying to people, this person seems like they're kind of, you know, sketchy, to say the least. But, um, lately, uh, the feed about this person has been nothing but these charges which are, uh, according to the, like, news sites, two counts of CSAM, aggressive, uh, aggravated possession, two counts of using a computer to commit a crime, um, and this is something that applies to both them and their significant other. Like, uh, she basically, um, if this is the case... Uh, g like, if the worst possible version of events that's being reported from people who claim that they called the cops to see, like, what, what, what the fuck was up, right? The most, like, damning case here is that thousands of images were possessed. And that, uh, when Ashley, Ashley, Ashalute, said that she got pulled over a while back, it was actually a warrant from state troopers from a state trooper investigation about this, and her devices were seized. And um, when her devices were seized, the, they were kept and monitored, very likely, by the authorities. Um, but my point in bringing all this up is to be like completely transparent and upfront with that and say that if it is true... I don't care what happens to her. If it isn't, you know, I hope she's got a good lawyer. Um, but I'm not here to convict. I'm not a court. And I don't think the court of public opinion should be convicting either. Um, as you all know, I'm not a big fan of cancel culture. But that's exactly why I'm talking, because just an absolute flood, a torrential downpour of anti-trans sentiment poured out because of this and because the same anti-trans grifters like Andy No, who basically two days after the fucking shit came out acted like he had an exclusive and then retracted that because he's a lying grifting hack 
a lot of the people reporting on this situation um, are just there because they already don't like trans people and they're using this to their advantage. There's a whole tag I, I want you to check out. It's called hashtag not a drag queen. And in it, you can find an absolute cavalcade of people arrested on much worse charges. Republicans. Uh, heterosexual, non-trans teachers. Fucking Catholics. Fucking Boy Scout leaders. Fucking church leaders. Fucking cops. Troops. Just an absolute torrent of it. Uh, like from Antifa Operative on Twitter as well. Very good account. Um, and if you want to find out about an absolute raging torrent of pedophiles who don't fit the right-wing narrative agenda, feel free to go check that out. Because the the sheer quantity of people who just came out in order to say trans people are groomers because of this case, and because of a select few other cases when the vast majority of people involved in this sort of thing are not that. It's sickening. It should sicken anybody here to protect children. Because it makes your job harder when it's watered down like this. When the issue is watered down like this, it makes your job harder if your job is to protect kids. Because so many people in these spaces are in it for very bad reasons. They're there to reify their bigotry, and they're not there to protect children. And because of that, they will take instances like this, assume it's true without this person being convicted. Meanwhile, there are tons of people who have been convicted that they're not looking at, and they will use this as a way to make it seem like the people who want to protect children are nothing but bigoted pieces of shit. Somebody replied to and then blocked my, uh, my, my account because I accurately called them out. They were throwing their nephew under the bus that they had been publicly talking shit about um, for, like, many months. And then, after this came out, after this, like, pandering shit, some of which was done personally under Ashalute's tweets, endorsed by Ashalute, um, you know, like, oh, you're one of the good ones. If more people were like you, then I'd stop being a fucking bigoted piece of shit. Right? Um, after all that, when Ash, when Ash was found to be guilty in the eyes of public opinion and not courts, this person immediately threw their nephew under the bus by saying, you know, they're not all gross perverts. Give them a chance. Acting like because of these two people, her fucking nephew is indictable. That's how insufferably insane these people are. Similarly... Uh, to all of this, because, like, I could keep going on and on about this particular subject. There are so many anti-trans fucking opportunists jumping on this trend. The same kind of anti-trans opportunists that jumped on the Nashville shooting. The same anti-trans opportunists that pretend um, that the last X amount of mass shooters have been trans when that's anything but true. Um... Those people are all, you know, they're all hijacking this incident. They're all making this incident about them and their petty beefs rather than actually protecting any children. Similarly, uh, recently, I went against uh, Sally Mayweather, Sal the Agorist on Twitter, along with people like, you know, fucking friends of mine and people like, you know, B Robert Murphy co-host with Tom Woods because fucking Sal was promoting Unleash the Cops and endorsing police brutality because it's happening to commies under the Malay regime, the Javier Malay regime. Um, 
he took videos of cops beating the fuck out of protesters. And he used that as an example of, you know, like what, what should be done in America? What should have been done this whole time? Because they're not people and they don't get, and he, he got corrected. I had a whole stream about this particular correction, but this is opportunism again. Because now that an alleged ANCAP became president in Argentina, they can ignore all the rights abuses that they would be absolutely fucking infuriated about if it happened here. If it happened in America, they would absolutely be fucking infuriated. Example. Just... One of the things he did that right libertarians are ignoring right now because they finally got something to jack off to uh, other than, you know, the kind of thing Ash got arrested for. Um, the, the These sorts of people are all about... Um, you know, not centrally controlling the economy and getting off fiat currency. And they pretend that he's ending the Fed because he's allegedly getting rid of Argentina's central bank. But what he's really doing is he's getting the value of the peso halved. He did that in early December. He just centrally managed the value of the currency into half, thus cutting the savings and spending power of the people who had worked their asses off in half. And then, to add insult to injury, he allowed for contracts to be run in dollars and other currencies. And rent prices were obviously higher because of this. And now that they've dropped 20% after sort of starting to normalize when people are charging rent in pesos anyway, uh, because the vast majority of rent that's happening now is happening in pesos, the market is sort of bouncing back and struggling along and primarily not being paid in dollars. Um... The fact that they're being paid in pesos now primarily means that it has slowed the absolute spike from Malay's shock treatment. But right libertarians are ignoring that central management and they're saying that no, this 20% drop is because he got rid of price controls. He got rid of rent controls. No, that's not why it's dropped 20% in a month. It's dropped 20% in a month because landlords realized that they couldn't charge the insane over-doubling uh, due to slashing in value and then being able to charge in the competing currency. Because, let me just be clear, if you cut somebody's savings in half by saying that they can't, uh, that, that their, their pesos have half the value that they used to, and then, after doing that, you say that they can be charged for rent in a foreign currency that doesn't have that, um, what you get is fucking not only half the spending power, but also, like, way less than half in the ability to actually spend it, because it can be charged in something that's, like, valued higher. So it's like all of that compounds to make extremely bad economic conditions. If Biden did that, they'd be storming the White House, these rightoid fucks. But instead of having solidarity with fellow people in the working class, what did they do? They celebrated to the tunes of tens of thousands of likes on that tweet, thousands of retweets, lots of support. And not only that tweet, but him outright saying that he supports the Pinochet regime and said that the, said that the Pinochet regime took out the trash. This is evil. It's, it's opportunism. It's saying that now that anti-communism might be in vogue again, a la the Red Scare, if not maybe even worse... 
I'm going to be the edgy anti-communist that I've wanted to be. I'm going to jump on this trend. Mission successful. Mission accomplished, as George Bush would say. You know, ignore the fact that he's installing a facial recognition super state and banning masks at protests. Ignore the fact that he's making it easier to lock up kids. Ignore the fact that he's, like, mandating for-profit prison labor. Ignore the fact that he's creating a pretty, like, epically huger prison industrial complex than the U.S. has. Ignore the fact that his uh, fucking choice of minister includes Patricia Bullrich, who said she was going to wage a war on drugs. Ignore all of the facts that prove that he's no libertarian hero. Ignore all of that. Because I don't like them commies. Opportunism. You know? It's the same kind of opportunism that you get when f fucking Libertarian Party debates have this question. While all this other shit is happening, while all this jackboot bullshit is being supported, because it's not just Sal, it's a bunch of party arcs, which are really the people who are celebrating this politician and his successes in government. Not agorists, but party arcs. Um, there are a ton of people who are party arcs domestically who have been latching on to every little bit of the anti-woke and anti-communist thing. And now, at the Libertarian Party debates, instead of addressing anything of real substance, like maybe, you know, not supporting foreign dictators... Um, they instead chose to make the pivotal question of, like, what qualifies a libertarian as, did you take the vaccine? I think his name is Lars, was the only person to say, none of your business. Because it's none of their fucking business. I didn't take the vaccine. The last vaccine I took was tetanus in decades because I'm not anti-vax, but I am vax suspicious. I'm hesitant as fuck. I did the fuck out of my own research. But when, when it comes to libertarianism, a lot of the people involved in these spaces want to boil it down to these tiny little issues like, did you make a choice with your own body that made sense at the time to you? Um, they take that and make it the linchpin issue as to whether or not you're libertarian. Pardon me if I don't think that's reasonable. Because I don't think that's reasonable. <laughs> you know? And, and what's more... So many of these people in the same fucking debate, they were backing Texas's right to self-defense. Over what? It's a buzzword. The self-defense that Texas wants is the ability to push families into water filled with razor wire. That's not self-defense. The Texas governor wrote a fucking long-ass screed against, you know, the concept of the Biden administration withdrawing support for a state that puts razor wire in the fucking sea. Um, they're allowed to do that. Play status games, win status prizes. If you're running a government and that government is connected to the governments of, you know, like to the, to the central federal government... You have to play by at least some of their rules. You've got silly things like the Constitution and, you know, fucking, you got, you got, like, 
strictures and policies and executive orders and shit. That's what happens when you play the statist games. And there are so many people who want to act like this This should be a mark for secession. For the state to secede from the union and get a divorce from the nation. No. And if it does, every liberty-minded person should flee. Because, as Ron Paul accurately put it, borders are not designed to keep these people out, they're designed to keep you in. They're designed to be the fences on the outside of the tax farm. That is real libertarianism. It's saying that government imaginary lines on paper designed to delineate things that they stole to begin with so that they can continue to maintain an ever-expanding empire that includes NATO and the rest of the Western hegemony, all backed by the U.S., its foreign conquests in the petrodollar, and its massive spying networks that span the globe, and these kinds of things that military interventions and coups and overthrowing foreign blah blah that have made regions unstable to the point where da 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 they have migrants coming here. <laughs> this is the real shit. This is the real reason things are the way they are. It's not because of Democrats. It's not because of one side. It's not because of socialism or the left. It's because the government fucked up a bunch of places, and now those people are leaving. I'm writing an article against Elon Musk right now, spreading fear about immigration, and posting outright bullshit. Just straight up lies. So, keep an eye out for that on anarchunity.com. Uh, if I'm not homeless by then, links are in the description if you want to support the effort. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. But the point is that, like, there are mass anti-immigrant mentalities because it's easier to blame people from over there coming here than it is to take responsibility. And so, they would rather pretend that pushing families into water filled with razor wire is a self-defense issue and support people caravanning down to Mexico so that those people who caravan down to Mexico can, um, what? Defend the government and its ability to violently keep people out of this place that the government stole to begin with and that the government continually fucks up other places in order to maintain. That's not libertarianism. That's not anarchy. If you ask me, defending the empire and their arbitrary boundaries is a much, much greater indictment of liberty than voluntarily choosing to put something in your own body. Now, does it say something about these people's trust in institutions that they chose that? Possibly. Maybe even yes. But... You know what's worse than voluntarily choosing to put a government-sponsored injection into your own body? Putting razor wire into somebody else's. I feel like that's indisputable. But this, apparently, is the minority position among libertarians. Because they would rather pretend that decisions they didn't personally make about their own body are more important than decisions they are making for other people's. Ignoring the root causes. Not getting out of foreign entanglements. In fact, supporting people like Vivek Ramaswamy, who is one of the massivest opportunists out there. In his goals to militarize the border and invade Mexico to use violence against the cartels. This is where we are. This is just Republicans, but yellow.
it's not even Republicans who smoke pot anymore. Because a lot of these people claim the whole, like, Christian nationalism grift. And they're all about God. And they, like, call drug use and sex work degeneracy. Explain to me how that is not Republicans. But oh right, you're not allowed to bring up their funding sources and the fact that their funding and direct political connections are oftentimes directly the same ones that fund the conservatives. And that maybe the reason that they support the same sorts of positions as PragerU is because PragerU also takes money from the Kochs, and so does Reason Magazine, and so does Young Americans for Liberty, and so does everybody involved in these circles of right libertarianism, and maybe, maybe, we have an entryism problem, and have for a while. Maybe, there's a significant problem in libertarian circles with opportunism. And that's why I could continue to go on this route. You want to call LGBT people groomers? when it was that hard for right libertarians to stop associating with an anti-war rally that had a twice convicted child predator who is also pro-war speaking at this anti-war rally? You wanna call other people groomers when Thaddeus Russell still has not retracted his statements that he supports adult child sex and thinks it's comparable in terms of consent to telling children to go engage in fucking team sports? You want to call other people groomers after you get done uh, supporting people like Eliza Blue, who's, by the way, a massively pro-censorship person, who took a bunch of people's shit down because she could. Not because it was actually a violation, mind you, but because she didn't want it getting out that she did some shit voluntarily a while back. And, and let's just talk about that. Because these people are all about free speech until Elon Musk starts censoring accounts at the behest of foreign governments until Elon Musk starts censoring accounts that they don't like. Then it's celebratory. Until Elon Musk gets an AI to automatically ban people he doesn't like. I did a, a thread on Justin Moan the other day. Uh, a fucking insane person. A decentralizer. One of these people's people who cut his dad's head off because he said state governments we're fine, but the federal government is a target. And my thread got censored. It got labeled as sensitive content by Elon Musk's censorship AI. I included no sensitive content, but my thread is now more deboosted than it already would be when he's not giving people freedom of reach to begin with and increasing the visibility of content from, non, uh, from blue check accounts and decreasing the visibility to non-blue check accounts because they didn't give him money. But he put a sensitive warning on my fucking thread. Every single tweet in it, despite exactly zero fucking sensitive content. I went over his ideology. I went over what he believed. I didn't show a decapitation. I didn't show jack shit fucking wrong. But my tweets were suppressed. Because Elon Musk is a lying, censorious hack. Just like I've been saying forever. Just like I've been being mocked for saying forever. Ooh, delete your Twitter. Nope. And if you really believe that, then shut the fuck up forever about the WEF now that it's literally in charge of the joint, you hypocritical cuck. I'm sick of these people. I've been sick of these people for a while, and I'm sick of seeing them get the success while the people against them get the shaft. And them acting like this new paradigm of silencing opposition is acceptable and just. It's fucking not. They're opportunists. They're not here for liberty. They're not here for anarchy. They're here to instate themselves as the new regime. 
so that they get what they want and fuck the rest. That's why they love this fucking Israel situation, because a lot of them are anti-Jew. A lot of them are Holocaust deniers. A lot of them are Andrew Anglin simps, like Lou Rockwell boosting the Daily Stormer not too long ago. Or did people forget about that? They probably did, or didn't know. He posted a link to an article that claimed that, you know, fucking the Jews and the transes were all part of a gigantic agenda to damage the West, weaken it from within, and destroy us all. This is Nazi shit, and Lou Rockwell just unironically, uncritically, shared a link to it on his fucking website. And these people defended him back then. They said it's not that big a deal. It damn well is. You support the biggest Nazi website on the fucking planet? You're a big fucking deal in terms of boosting statism. You're playing statist games. Not anarchist. Not libertarian. You cannot be an anarchist or libertarian stormer. That should get you kicked out of the libertarian movement, shouldn't it? I guess not. I guess we're allowed to support fucking Nazis now. In fact, it's fucking mandatory. Because if you don't, if you call these people out for any of this shit that I have, you get blackballed. You get poor. You get no interactions. You get no support. Nothing. If you point out that they've got shit, they've got to fix. And it ain't just the other guys. It ain't just the wokes. You get kicked out of groups. You get banned. You get mass censored. You get fucked with endlessly. Because these people are opportunists, not libertarians. And they latched on to a libertarian movement that already existed so that they could fuck everyone out of it, remove bigotry planks, and say, Yup, this is the new normal. Libertarianism is Republicans, but edgier. We love the Daily Wire. We love PragerU. We love the Daily Stormer. We love Owen Benjamin. We love these fucking statist bootlicking hacks. And we'll, we'll boost Andrew Tate, Clint Russell, while saying that we don't like groomers. Pardon me if I don't believe you. Because you're boosting a man who admitted to grooming a 15-year-old girl and flying her out when she was 17 to work in his sex business. Girl, working in sex business. I guess it's only bad when it's related to the Democrats enough that you can say Epstein Clinton and ignore the Trump connection. Ignore the Elon Musk, Ghislaine Maxwell picks. Ignore anything that doesn't make you look good, right? So maybe I'm a little bit fucking irritated with all this. Maybe I think that this is the wrong way for us to go. Maybe. I think if we could band together and deal with real problems like the AI technocratic surveillance state, the fucking World Economic Forum Bilderberg dick jamming its way down our throat telling us we will own nothing and be happy, telling us that we are the carbon they want to reduce, telling us that we've got a whole lot of things that we could be uniting on, but instead we're supporting people like Malay because allegedly he ended his own central bank and then, oh, what did he do? He wants to dollarize. He wants to get that economy on our Fed. He wants to boost the U.S. economy and their Federal Reserve by granting them seniorage. That is the small amount of money that is collected every time it's printed. Seniorage would boost the U.S. state. He is helping the U.S. state. He's in bed with the Zionists. And these fucking opportunists, who, by the way, they took advantage of the Israel situation because they already hated the Jews. 
And this is their opportunity to make everything about that. Like David Corvo, I think is his name, if I remember correctly, from fucking, like, uh, what what is it? Nephilim Death Squad? Lying about Jewish slave boats. So much so that when I contacted historians and people from the region, they confirmed that his story about his, his poor, beset grandmother being... Uh, taken over on slave boats by the Jews was bullshit because she was born there and that's standard documentation. But I'm being told that Toad is the front runner for libertarians and he says that we know who really uh, ran the boats even after the lies were found out. And he's totally okay with calling me out because I'm poor. I'd rather be poor than a sellout, than a hypocrite, than a statist, than a fascist. But so many of these people are just riding the grift. Becoming affiliated with hacks like Tim Pool, who doesn't even like Trump questioned on his show. Who told Luke Radowski to shut the fuck up about Operation Warp Speed. I don't even like Luke that much, but I think he's right about this. We should criticize Trump for being the king of the vaccines if we are going to say that vaccines are a linchpin issue for libertarian causes. But that doesn't stop Clint Russell from schmoozing with the guy, does it? And Tim is a sellout. He had exactly what he wanted on his show when Jesse Kelly, I think was his name, was talking about the violence he wants to enact on leftists. He got exactly what his audience paid for. Radical right-wing bullshit. But here we are. Here we are. This is what's not only acceptable, but mandatory. And people like me who call it out get the shaft. And people like the Tim Pool crowd... <laughs> Jocelyn, I still know you lied about me. I still know you tried to get this video taken down where I called that out. But now you're his media woman. <laughs> it's just such a fucking clusterfuck. And so many of these people will just block you if you call them out. On anything. Ever. And instead of being honest that they're keeping their echo chamber... They put it on lofty airs, like, no, you know what? I'm limiting access to me. I can't have these people besetting me on all sides, holding me accountable and telling me I should have my principles that I claim. Please. Bitch, please. If this is truly the party of principle, the principles it has are hypocrisy, fascism, and bigotry. And if anarchists that don't even claim the party allegedly, agorists want on board, feel free. But you're not agorists anymore if you accept the party arc solutions and if you endorse state violence. And none of you are libertarians if you want to control other people's sexuality or prevent them from crossing invisible lines on maps or wage wars on drugs or run a surveillance state or any of the number of other things that are adjacent to these sorts of fucks at this point. I'm right, you know I'm right, and that's why I'm frozen out. But hey... I'm staring down the barrel of losing everything at this point. So I might as well go out with a bang. And I might as well tell you that if you are on board with real principle, if you are on board with unity of the lowest against the ruling class, if you are an actual anarchos anarchist, one who does not support rulers and will not opportunistically latch onto them when the moment strikes, my page is for you. And lots more coming at anarchunity.com. Lots more coming here and lots more coming in 2024 because no matter what these people say, I will not shut the fuck up. 
and I will smash the fucking state.